Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fire Up! Yay! Oh, Ralph, this is the time of year. We've got baseball going. We've got the Olympics. Oh, yeah. And we've got football is back. Yes, it is. College Tonight football, is too. I mean, you know, they're both. It's college and NFL are back, ready to go. Tonight and is the Hall of and they're, and, they're, and they're firing it up, so just like we are tonight. So Exactly. It's time to be fired up, and it's a good thing. Uh, you know, it's been a long summer without football. I guess football is probably one of my favorite sports to watch. It so. is. I even watch UFL. I love football. I mean, mm -hmm. I follow it. I, I, I talk about it um, right now. I'm, I'm uh, reaching out to all the small colleges around Western Pennsylvania. I've had just about every coach on except IUP. And now I have Gannon's coach coming on uh, Tuesday. So nice, nice. Well, if you're not watch, if you're watching us, thank you because then you're not watching some of this other. But in the background, yes. I have I have the Pro yes. Football Hall of Fame game on, and right now it's 45 seconds left to go in the first half, and it's Houston 17, the Bears 14. Now wow. I can tell you that none of the starters, none of the starters from either team played tonight they said that this was an extra played. preseason game oh. so they were gonna let the second stringers and third stringers you know they're the ones that are fighting for the job so i have no problem with that whatsoever no i don't i don't either uh the interesting part here is candy is i want to see what's going to happen with this russell wilson justin fields thing i mean i was i'm on on wednesday nights with jeremy on the uh football round table and uh you know, that was, of course, when you talk about the Bears, everybody always talks about Justin Fields. Right. Well, now that he's a Steeler and he's fighting for a job, uh, I think Russell Wilson probably will be on a short leash. The good news here is, is that the Steelers got him on the cheap thanks to Denver because Denver now is paying him $38 million. We're only paying him a million and some change. Right. Okay. And. We have Justin Fields, and we have Kyle Allen, and I keep telling everybody, and everybody's like, ah, Kyle Allen, oh, he said, you know what? Kyle Allen backed up Josh Allen up there in Buffalo, and he did a good job of it, too, over the years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, we have Ben DiNucci now, who's a former Pitt quarterback, played for Dallas, started down there, mm -hmm. and he's been around the league. So uh, we got him back So here in, in uh, with the Steelers because – the guy that we got from Central Florida uh, that we signed at Parlay or Parley or whatever his name was, he mm -hmm. got drafted by the UFL. So now he can't play for the Steelers. Mm -hmm. So I haven't even looked. I haven't had really the time, but I will. I haven't even looked at the UFL's uh, college draft. I have to, look to have to take a look at that. Oh, See yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. I think a couple pit players were, were uh, drafted. I have to take a look at that. And of course, I keep my radar on for the pit players that are in the AFL right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been it's an interesting time. Obviously, one yes. of the things that the commenters were t talking about tonight is obviously the big news is like Caleb Williams and what is he going to do. Yes. And the thing is, is he was drafted number one, and he they said they have surrounded him with more weapons than any other rookie has ever been surrounded by. Uh, my question, Candy, is this. You can have all the weapons in the world. You have all the great wide receivers, the great running backs, a great tight end. But if you don't have an offensive line to protect this kid, Chicago Bears are in a heap of trouble. And if Matt Everfluss this year doesn't do well, he should be fired. Should have been fired after last year. Okay? I don't know what's going on there with the Bears. And it's sad, Candy, because the Bears were, uh, were a great organization at one time. And now... They've just fallen down where every year they're taking, they're picking number one. And that's sad. Well, it's, I guess it's sad for, depending on what viewpoint you're taking. I'm from the NFC North. My right. team is there. So I'm okay with Chicago, like tanking. Right, every being year. sad. They oh, absolutely. Like Jeremy, he's with Detroit. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, but I. I, it's just it was such a great organization over the years, Candy. That's the thing yes. that upsets me the most. There's been some great coaches there: Papa Bear Hallis, uh, mm -hmm. Mike Ditka, uh, yep. Lovey Smith. I mean, there were some just some really good coaches there over the years, and all of a sudden, it just went down the toilet over the last ten or fifteen or more years. Now, it's been it has, it has, you know, 
It's mm-hmm. sad for a great organization like that. And I mean, Green Bay has managed the, when they hired Matt Lafleur. They've managed to keep keep it stable, even without Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you know, correct. correct. Which which is kind of funny that you bring up Aaron Rodgers. Have you seen some of this in in what should I say? They've been talking about it and showing it on TV. How he's having passionate conversations with Wilson. They saying that they're not necessarily getting along and they're both coming out and saying, Oh no, it's us trying to help each other and grow each other. And I'm like, mm, I think, I, I think he's full of baloney. I think you know? so too. You I know, think I so think too. he's full of baloney because, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you know, he, he, he kind of like has this arrogant attitude like Ben Roethlisberger once had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, and it bit Ben in the butt real bad, okay, in this town. There were a lot of things that he did, and I know some people that he really screwed over real bad in this hospitality business because mm-hmm. I was in that business, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, going to places, uh, you know, renting a room for a party, having this big party, spending hundreds of dollars and not tipping the servers. Uh, you know, I'm Ben Roethlisberger. I should get my food for free, arguing with managers. Uh, just, uh, Just silly stuff. And then when that sex scandal came up, uh, the Steelers were going to trade him. And then they got him hooked up with the wife he has now, the woman he has now that's his wife. They got him hooked up. She's a friend of the Roonies, and they hooked him up. She's a Christian. And now he's, he's, a, he's a Christian now. And he has a family, and he changed his attitude. And the Steelers told him, next time we get anything like this that goes on, you're done. Okay, it's as simple as that. And, you know, I blame Mike Tomlin for that because Mike Tomlin just kind of let him do whatever he wanted because he was a starting quarterback here. And Mike Tomlin got lucky. He got a, a franchise quarterback to start his year year off when he first became head coach. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's not too many coaches that can say that, you know. Nope. Nope. So, but I agree with you on Aaron Rodgers. I think he's full of baloney. And I don't think, I think he's done. You know, if you ask my opinion, I think he's done. I think he's definitely on the decline. Yes. Um, I think it would be interesting to see. He says he's sealed. He's healed from the Achilles. But let's face it. As you age, even an Achilles heel, anything like that, takes you a lot longer. And I think you're more prone to injuring it again, I guess. Um, we'll see how many plays he lasts this year. You, you know, know, I know wrestlers who wrestle in their 50s and 60s. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Sting is 65. And he even came out and said, you know, when you get in your 50s and all that, it's hard to recover from injuries. Yeah, I mean, he was off for months when he got hurt and when he was in his 60s. Yep. So I, 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 I know what football players are like the same way. Why do you think now you got football players doing six and eight years and they're done? They're not hanging around any longer than that. I don't blame them. Because what I saw out of Mike Webster I was his personal cab driver. What I saw out of Mike Webster, I don't ever want to see from another football player again. Mm-hmm. Jeff Hardings, uh, a bunch of guys that we've had in the Steeler organization, a couple of them killed themselves because of this concussion stuff. Look at Junior Seau. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. and you're right. And and there's not too many like Tom Brady's and Aaron Rodgers out there. Tom Brady still wants to play football. If I'm Tom Brady, man, I'd soak it up and enjoy it. I would never go back on the field, you know? Correct. Right. I wouldn't either. Um, what, let's face it. This is the weekend for the Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, yes. It's it's cool to see um, Stephen McMichaels get in. Mongo, yeah. It's sad about his health condition and all that and what happened to him. Yeah. But it's really cool. They were saying Adam Schefter was on earlier pregame, and he was saying how they're going to take – the Hall of Fame ceremony to him and to his house. So all the bears are going to go, the jacket's going to go, the statue's going to go, and they're going to present it to him at his house, which I think is really cool and a good gesture. Did they have the ceremony already today? I, I, I no, it's this weekend. Involved. Oh, it's this weekend. I thought it's so. Weekend. It's usually what? Saturday or Sunday, right? Yeah. It, it started yeah. with tonight was the Hall of Fame game, so that right, that, you know, the, and then um, I believe Saturday is when they do the actual official ceremony. But nope. um, 
I'll check it out. Is- Depends on what time because I'm watching SummerSlam WWE. So, you know. Yes, yes. Um, but still, it's it's cool to see football is back. Uh, let's yes. face it. There have been a lot of, since we were last on, there have been a lot of quarterbacks that have gotten paid and gotten some nice, they really are going to need to start to do something about these quarterbacks and the astronomical amount of money. that. Well, you do know, Candy, and I don't know if you noticed or not, uh, you know, that uh, the owners want to have a quarterback uh, salary specifically for the quarterbacks because of this out of control stuff. I mean, you got quarterbacks that are bums, literally getting paid a lot of money. Guys have never even been to the Super Bowl, started maybe one season or whatever. And no offense to Jordan Love, but look at Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. I mean, he hasn't started that much. Look at the big money he's getting. And I keep using these two examples, Geno Smith and Daniel Jones. Both mm-hmm. of them have, I mean, that Geno Smith is okay. At least he's come around. But Daniel Jones has done nothing. And he's taken that money and, and walked away with it. And look at okay. Kirk Cousins. I'd love Trevor to be Lawrence. his agent, you know, the commission his agent makes on that. Oh, yeah, know. Trevor Lawrence, he made a boatload yeah, of money. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence is another one that's not really that proven. Tua's and made it, a lot of money. Yeah. You yeah. know, and he's injury prone. Yes. Yes. But, yes, you know, they've so, got to do something. Oh, they have to do something. And you know what position nowadays, Candy, gets unappreciated because it's a passing league as running backs. Mm-hmm. You know, the running backs are unappreciated. They really are. And they're lucky if they make it through a rookie contract with the way they get beat up and everything. They should be paid somewhat a lot of money as well. You know, everybody should, you right. know. And I'm frustrated with this, too, because the union should step in and say, hey, wait a minute. You can't really do that because you're you're pushing away the running backs. Or, or the wide receivers get paid a lot of money. You push away the running backs. How about some of these offensive linemen that don't get paid a lot of money? about tight ends? You know what I'm saying? You know, right. other positions on a team that might not get a lot more money. And I get your quarterbacks, you're the captain of your ship on the offense, and I get that. But you know what? That's 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 not fair, and I think the union should step in and say, hey, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. If you're going to cap the quarterbacks, you know, you've got to start paying more money to other people. You can't just, you know what I mean, you know. Right. But if if they agree with this, I agree with you too. They need to do something because this is this is a runaway freight train that just isn't going to stop. Exactly, and don't get me wrong. I'm don't get me wrong. I'm glad Jordan Love. I'm glad people get are getting paid, but that is way too much money for someone that's not proven. Like you said, he hasn't started more than a year. Oh, no. um, you know, and I, I just don't understand. I I do do a, to a certain extent. They think he's the future, and I get that. But he, he's getting paid, what, more than Mahomes, who's... Yes, and Mahomes know, has proven. been to the Super Bowl. Right. So, I they're mean, you know, that's it. the point of the thing is what I'm trying to say. He's been to the Super Bowl. That's like coaches. You know, they go on and on, Candy, about Mike Tomlin. Well, when was the last time Mike Tomlin won a playoff game? When was the last time Mike Tomlin went to the Super Bowl? Mike Tomlin's the greatest coach in the world because he has the best off uh, season, regular season record in the league. whoop de doo You know, Bill Carr once said this, Candy. If you're not in this to win Super Bowls, you don't need to be in it. That's as simple as that, you know. And, you know, I, I, I'm tired of hearing about how great Mike Tomlin is when you have nine and eight records except last year. And they just gave him a contract extension. And I hope that, and I'm, I'm hearing stories, this could be his last extension. This could be his last time. I think he'll get his 20 years and walk away. I hope. I really hope and, you know, and pray. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I feel bad. There's there's some injury news that has already come out. Um, Justin Herbert is now. Yes. He has planters flat, fasci, Pats or, um, Pats or fa- fasciitis. Fasciitis, right. So we have a catcher on the Pirates that has that. That that can be very painful, and he's out for yeah. a couple of weeks. Okay, they yeah, said. can't it couldn't pronounce it. What what's it called, sweetheart? Fasciitis. It's called plantar's fasciitis. My uh, my wife's mom used to be a uh, an OR nurse, so she knows um, all yes. those terms. So yes, oh, she has it too. My wife has it. I'm sorry. I, and now I, they're saying Geno Smith is dealing with nip 
knee and hip issues at training camp, which will force him to miss at least the next two practices. Um, well, we so just it, lost Roman Wilson to an ankle injury, and he's supposed to be our number two receiver. How about how about DeAndre Hopkins is dealing with a strained knee that could sideline him for four to six weeks? Oh yeah. So these are some big names going down already. Um, and let's Russell face Wilson it, has a calf injury because I don't know what's going on with the strength and conditioning coach with the Steelers. We have a new one because our the guy that we had retired. He's been around for sixty years. Uh, uh, John uh, Norwich, he retired. And they brought in this other guy, and he's got hit him pushing a sled. I'm like, why the heck are you pushing a sled, you know, and causing this problem? He immediately should have been fired. I mean, because you don't have quarterbacks pushing sleds. I mean, no. you just don't do that. No, and when you look at, like, Justin Herbert, you feel bad because it's a whole yes. new coaching staff, and here he's trying to learn a whole new system, and now he can't. He can't even practice. He can't so, practice, right? I feel bad for the kid because you know what? He's a good quarterback, and he, he had a, he had Brandon Staley as his coach, and you know I, I feel bad for him. Now he's got a, an ideal offensive coach in Jim Harbaugh uh, that that could help him excel. And now all of a sudden, he, you know, he's hurt now. And I agree with you, Candy. I feel bad for the kid for the kid because of uh, you know this situation, you know. And let's. Um, I'm just reading this and granted this is, a, this is a couple hours old at this point, but Cleveland Browns running back Deonta Foreman was ex, um, expected to be released from the hospital Thursday after sustaining a neck injury during a kickoff drill in practice. Foreman was immobilized on the field Thursday morning and flown by helicopter from the Browns training camp. So that's sad. Let's hope that everything, the x-rays were negative and stuff like that. Let's hope he's okay. You never like to see injuries, especially during no. training camp. Not and at the all. First, you know, practice. Especially teams who are sad, like Carolina Panthers, the Bears. Right. Some of these teams that re are now trying to rebuild and relying on the draft and got new coaches, okay, mm -hmm. what they, what they, they can't afford to have injuries because they're, they're trying to build rebuild you know right. right look at dave canellis with carolina he can't afford to have injuries he has to he's, he's got to get that team back up and, and 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 for goodness sake i don't know why he ever took that job adam bluestein hello thank hey adam for, thank you for turning in tonight especially since i know that you know football's up um oh question Question for Candy. What kind of sub <laughs> did you have tonight? I know Scott got the turkey. Oh my goodness. I had um I I know a lot of times I have the Italian BMT. That's what that's I'm what my wife favorite. eats. She loves the Italian BMT. She gets that all the time at Subway. Yep, that's my favorite. I get the I get the, the ultra, ultimate cheese steak or I get the meatball sub. Uh, One of the okay. uh, I get those. I like their tuna too. I eat their tuna now since I've been trying to watch my weight a little bit i i eat the tuna i knew it i love the italian awesome well thank you adam yes that's have my you tried food. those foot long um uh, like the pretzel the any any pretzel or whatever not. have, have you, you tried that yet no i haven't, I haven't. The, we haven't been the to subway churro, in a while the churro the pretzel or the cookie but now the, the cookie, cookie yeah. Is thirteen hundred and thirty calories for that foot long. I'm like oh thirteen hundred and thirty calories for that cookie Wow. Yes. Thanks. Yes. No, I, I was looking at it and they have those, um, the roll up things too, the, the dippers. And yes. So like, I saw those, those are 400 yeah. calories a piece. I'm like, that's a lot. That I'm, like, is, I'm trying to watch yeah. my <clears throat> calories and intake. So, but let's say, okay. So we talked to football. It's back on, um, Let's see. I was asking Scott earlier, but he didn't know what kind of camera do you have to, um, to do your sports photography? I have a Canon. Um, I, use I was going to say Canon. It's probably the best one to have if you're into photography. I know because I DJ weddings and stuff. I know photographers that use that. That's all they use is Canon. I don't think I've seen one that didn't have one. You there know, are so. some other ones out there, but yeah, I, um, my trusty old Canon is good. What is it? Uh, with the N? I forget the name of that camera. Nikon. 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 Yeah, Nikon's a good one. 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, excellent. There's a lot of them that have come out into the market that are newer and, you know, and I'm not going to say they're necessarily better, but they have new gadgets, new, new technology. Obviously, let's face it, technology, anything you buy electronic now is out of date within like what? Two weeks, it seems. Could be the way they're the way they're making new electronics. Here's the thing that bothers me though, get away from a sports topic a minute. Now, I brought this up on Wednesday on my Ralph's opinion show. How in the world did you get lost now with all this GPS technology? How in the god in the world do you get lost? I, I just don't get it. You know unless, unless your GPS can't find you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, Garmin probably is, is is gone out of business, and so is those other ones because you have GPS now on your phone. I mean, I use my phone. I have a Garmin GPS, but I use the one on my phone. But Ralph, I just fired I will, it up after I switched vehicles. I will tell you, I have. It had been a while since I have used my Garmin. We do have a Garmin, and I use my phone a lot. But I will tell you, when we traveled. And we went north of Niagara Falls into Canada. We didn't want to use the GPS on our phones because you are roaming. You are in, um, you are no longer in the U S and so right. a lot of your phones, it's, you get charged a lot differently. So with the Garmin, you don't get charged. So charged. we went back to the Garmin at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we were happy we had taken that. So, but yes, I agree for the most part. Why would you get lost? If anymore? I can't understand that. I, I just don't get it. I mean, I, that's something that bothers me. I mean, I get people to drive like turtles because they have no clue where they're going and then put on this last minute turn signal going like this. And I'm like, <laughs> how, in the, how in the world? Would but those might, might be people that only have flip phones yet and they still don't have GPS on them. You never know. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> and also too, uh, everybody's too busy on TikTok. Well, that's true. They're too busy on their phone to look on at the their GPS. phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is people that are like on Facebook or looking at, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be driving a motor vehicle. What's going on? You know? So, um, hey, we're talking about everything that I can We're talking about, uh, subway sandwiches and, uh, people that, uh, don't know how to use GPS. All I kinds know, of stuff, medical terms. I mean, we're on, you know, we're on a roll tonight. We you know, are, so. we are. Well, we're fired up on all. Soon. Yes, we are. We're fired up big time. I'm always fired up on this program. So in every program. So. so tell me, Ralph, the baseball trade deadline came and passed this week. What right. was one of the biggest trades you th think that happened that you liked or didn't like? Either way. Well, I really didn't take much a look at it. I watched a little bit of the baseball uh, network, the MLB network, a little bit. I, I I really don't know because, Candy, I'm sorry to say that. I really don't know because I really didn't pay much attention to it. Now, my caregiver does. He pays attention to baseball a lot. And he was telling me all the stuff that was going on. But I really haven't paid much attention to it, and I haven't gotten into it yet. In fact, I haven't even... I have a guest coming on on Tuesday, possibly that's going to break down all that for me, you know? So awesome. yeah, awesome. I, I just, I, I have, I didn't pay much attention to it. I'll get it. I have to look at it eventually, you know, getting this new van and everything. It was just, it kind of threw me off a little bit on some things. No, I understand. So one of the biggest trades I would say is the Yankees traded to get jazz Chisholm from the Marlins. And yeah, was, we were supposed to trade for him, the pirates. And uh, he was on our list, and we we blew it. We laid an egg, but we got that Dela Cruz. It sounds like he he's going to be okay. You know, he is going to be okay. I think what I'm going to say is, since I've covered the Marlins quite a bit, and especially since I'm a photographer, I'm in the photo well, and I'm in right by the dugout, so I can see them interacting and stuff like that. I think right. Jazz has such a personality that New York will fit him and yes. see him. Um, and let's face it, in the first three games he's played, he's already hit four home runs for them. So back to, I mean, if you think about who do you want to pitch to, Judge or him now, like they're going back to back, I would, he, he's in a really good situation for him. So good for him. Yeah, the Yankees have to start, uh, Candy, uh, have to start getting back into what they used to be. Uh, you know, a dominating team that always was in the World Series. And lately they haven't, they've laid an egg. I mean, you know, and the Dodgers, look at them too. They've laid an egg. 
I mean, I've said this many times. I don't care how much money you pay for players. If you don't have, if them players get hurt, you're out of that money and you lose in the playoffs. It's that simple. And the Dodgers have had that problem. Yep. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, it is. It is nuts. It, it's sad about in baseball, too. I, I wish they get a salary cap. You know, yep. I, I, that revenue sharing is a joke. I mean, and I'm sorry to say that, but it is. It is. And it's there's such a difference in salary, like for teams that have spent salary wise. It's just crazy. You would think that the ones that were, you know, spending so much money would be so far ahead of everybody else. It's kind of crazy that they aren't. Well, the Marlins were definitely sellers because I want to say AJ Puck went, Tanner Scott went. Brian Horning went, Brian De La Cruz, Jazz Chisholm. Um, and earlier this year, they already had Luis Arias go. They had so many that left. It's not even funny. I, I don't think I'm going to recognize the team when I go back down and cover them soon. But, you know, hopefully the, hopefully some of these draft or prospects will pan out for them. Um, well, the Yankees are always good for uh, with prospects. They have a very good scouting department, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they're always good. Aaron Boone, I think he needs to win soon, or I think he's going to get fired because they haven't been, as I mentioned earlier, they have not been in that echelon of where they used to be. Right. You know, now they're on the outside looking in, you know, and I, I think mm -hmm. if they don't start winning soon and getting back to the, where they used to be, I think Aaron Boone's going to get fired. And I think, uh, Dave Roberts should be fired in Dodgers because he's got all that talent. And he, he can't get past the first round of playoffs. Yep. I agree. I agree. You know, the Marlins are sellers. Tampa Bay selling too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was on, on with Peter Blake last night for, uh, uh, you know, our wrestling segment on his show, and he was talking about that yesterday. He was saying about how they're sellers. So, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, they're selling off. They are. So. They are. So the other big sports that's happening right now is happening around the world over in Paris. And yes, that would be the Olympics. Olympics. So, Ralph, have you been catching many of the Olympics? I have not. I'm not really into the Olympics that much, but I like water polo and a few of the other stuff that they do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I heard that we've dominated in some different categories. Uh, I know we have a lot of silver medals. We've only won, what, five or six maybe gold medals. I saw the count. But I haven't really, like, focused in on it. You know, mm -hmm. I know about Simone Biles and all that stuff and, you know, the gymnastics team. I'm interested yeah. to see what the bat men's basketball team's going to do because I heard they played a, Sudan, a South Sudan team that really has – that really is nothing and, and came close to losing. So, I mean, you know, I, 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 you know I, I'm just wondering if they think that they're better than everybody and they don't have to play everybody tough. You know, you better be careful. You'll get one of these countries that just that'll sneak up on you and beat you, you know. And mm -hmm. uh that's the way I look at the US team. They better they better get their act together and get that arrogant ad attitude out because if they don't, they might get beat by some team in in Zimbabwe or whatever, you know. Yes. Actually they they I think they played it was a rematch because right. um this time around they um, they clinched a trip to the quarterfinals by beating the South Sudan. They won 103 to 86 last night. So they, they, um, how should I put it? They were scared the last time they decided they didn't want to be the laughing stock and, uh, lose to them. So I think, yes, they I, I, I mean, it was that. close to last game. And I mean, my co-host smoking Jim Frazier said on our sports corner show the other night that this, that that's unacceptable to me. I mean, you know, you got, you're supposed to be the dominating team in this whole Olympics. You're supposed to have the greatest athletes in the world. And, you know, you almost come up short. I mean, you know. Correct. Correct. Um, I, I find the Olympics are, the, the, the thing that I like about the Olympics is you can turn them on and just watch a little bit and then you can go away and you can, you know, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, whatever see. sports interest you. I mean, right. you know, like I said, I, I kind of like water polo. Mm -hmm. You know, when mm -hmm. I could, when I, well, I could still swim, even though I can't walk, but I could still swim a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
I used to be a certified lifeguard and everything. And, you know, there were times when, uh, when I went to Boy Scout camp, we would play water polo. So I, I got to like water polo, right? you know, so, you know, I like some of, some of this stuff they have in the summer Olympics. I do too. I mean, I, I obviously, I, I like gymnastics. The marathon running, you know, yep. that kind of thing. And some, some other stuff. Winter, the winter some Olympics the is the thing I really like, like skiing, hockey, you know, that okay. kind of thing, you know? Okay. Okay. Um, I like some of the, even the track and field events. I really like yeah. the fact that you can just watch a little bit and then you can like leave. Like, you know, yeah. I, I don't have to sit there and, you know, I mean, I hate to say this. I love football. Football is one of my favorite sports, but it's time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's really another story. Supposedly we have some U S players playing football in this Olympics or something. And, and I, from what I understand, we're not, we're not doing real well or something, or we're, you know, winning by a, a couple points or something when we should probably be dominating the sport that we, as a, as a country uh, plays a lot of, I mean, we're the ones that, that started football. I mean, mm -hmm. and then the Canadians started doing it and there's a little bit of European football and you know what I mean? They, the Europeans, uh, started rugby. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, so, but, uh, yeah, I, I hear we're not, we're, I don't, I'm not saying doing too good. I don't know, but the stories I'm hearing is we're again, coming up close. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so we should really dominate, but I mean, it, nowadays, you know, it's, it's really tough. A lot of these countries are stepping it up and, uh, I think U S needs to step it up. Well, I think some of it is, is that we've been, how should I put it? We kind of train. Spoiled. Like, if you well, if you think about it, like the NBA, we're not just U.S. American players anymore. Like no, you know the Bucks great, the Bucks Bucks best player right now is Giannis. Well, he's playing for Greece, Greece. So, like he's yeah. not playing for the United States. So I think, you know, I think we're, we're kind of blessed, and yet we're not because when we think of all of our different sports, people are coming from different countries to play sports here in america in the it's nba yeah i think i think you have a couple oriental players and some other you know from some other countries right. i know pitt had some guys from lithuania that were here at one time so i mean yeah a lot of players are coming from across the globe to play mm -hmm. in the united states and then when you get into the olympics like if like if we play greece this guy knows some of these players and knows how to play against them and who knows you know yep. exactly. it could happen that way Exactly. Exactly. Well, Ralph, any other topics besides my town that you'd like to bring up tonight? Not really. I mean, like I said, I really didn't get into the trade deadline thoroughly. I mean, I, I followed the pirates a little bit, but I didn't get into the whole thing thoroughly. I'm going to have to look some things up and get into some stuff. And, you know, I will probably do that in the next few days. No, problem. because I've been running around all week long and then doing my shows and stuff. And then I had a meeting yesterday with the producers for PC TV, we're going to try to resurrect the TV station so we can keep our programs on and uh, things like that. So awesome. I had that meeting yesterday and then I had to do a show. And I, in fact, Wednesday's my busiest show day. I have three shows on Wednesdays. Wow. wow. Cause you I do, I do my own. And then I did that zoom meeting and with the producers from PC TV. And then I did at nine o'clock, I'm on with Jeremy and his, uh, in the football uh, round table. And then at 1030, I'm on with Peter Blake down in Tampa for wrestling. So I, 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 Wednesday's probably my busiest day. Wow. Okay. So tell me what's happening in your town. Oh, nothing really. Uh, we're not uh, doing much here. Concerts have been coming in and out of here. Pirates are back home. Uh, actually, believe it or not, the Pirates are actually the talk now. Uh, usually when the Steeler training camp comes around, nobody shows up at pirate games, but we're starting to sell out games now. Uh, and there's actually talk about the pirates because of the fact that I said that no one believed me that I think the pirates were going to have a, a 500 year this year and everybody else. Oh no, you know, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay. And now we're above 500 and I'm looking right again. So, I mean, you know, we'll see, we have to, see what happens here. We still have a lot of baseball to be played and we need to make, uh, to, to see where the pirates are going to go towards the end. And, and they're in the thick of things in a wild card, but they have to, and that's where the talk is coming in here. Skeens, Paul Skeens saved the year for the pirates this year. And then, 
you know, the fact that we're in, in, in this race for the wild card has really stepped it up for the Pirates this year. And then on top of that, we just made these trades. And I think the Pirates are better off now. I just watched a pitcher last night that we just got. Uh, I watched him last night. He went to like five innings and did, only gave up like a couple runs. And uh, mm-hmm. we just got improved our bullpen. And uh, we did some other, uh, some outfield. Uh, we got a guy who, uh, a minor league player, Mike York, who is uh, this ultimate player. He's played all, all the positions on the field, including catcher. So, I mean, we got this guy. And he can hit. That's mm. where we're lacking in hitting. We have a lot of good field position players, but we don't have a lot of hitting. And, uh, you know, that's where it is. And, you know, the Steeler training camp, everybody and their mother shows up there. I don't go to them things. I'm not sitting out in the heat to watch practice. I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll sit right here. You can put it on my TV and I'll watch it. You know? There you go. So, there you go. You know, my, uh, my wife's father used to say, the best seat in the house is at home in front of your TV. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way I look at it now. In some cases, yep. I so, understand completely. You know, so I would say in my town, I'm gonna. There's always something happening in Milwaukee, but what I'm gonna say right now is Green Bay training camp. One of I think the neatest traditions is the practice field is a is I would say across the parking lot and across the street from the actual locker room of where all the players have their in Lambeau field. Right. So the players get ready in Lambeau field and then they have to make the, their way down to the practice facility. Well, and what they do for that is they ask all kinds of little kids come with their bikes and then the players will ride. I've seen that. Bikes. Yeah, the players ride the bicycles. Yeah, I've seen that. That's that's neat. It's, you know? it's awesome. I think it's a very good tradition because it really helps gel players with young kids. And, you know, these young, young kids, kids need love. that. They need that because <laughs> there's too many kids on the street right now, Candy. And it's not just here in Pittsburgh. It's across the country. We have kids committing crimes and doing stuff because – Parents don't know how to take care of their kids, but that yeah. that's another issue for another day. But, you know, it's great to see that kind of stuff going on because kids need, I wouldn't say a lot of players are idols, but kids right. need something like that. They need, you know. We look forward to something to make them see that yes. these are real human beings. They're not just people on TV down there. They make a lot of money, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it gives them a chance to give back to their community, which I think is right. really cool as well. Well, a lot of Steelers do that here, Candy. Food drives, uh, turkey mm-hmm. drives. Uh, Charlie Batch gets in, has the Batch Foundation. Cam Hayward does his thing. Uh, there, there's a lot of that here in Pittsburgh, and the Steelers are involved in that. And that's some good stuff there, you know, which is yes. great. You know, uh, Mike Tomlin has camps. Ben Roethlisberger is, is still ha- is doing some camps. Everybody's doing camps here. Some of the players. Some of the ex-Steelers are working in high school football. Their kids are in, in high school football here. And some of the ex Steelers are assistant coaches on some of these high, great high school teams we have here. So it, it, it's a nice thing, too, as well. St. Vincent College uh, is where we practice at. And Mike Tomlin once said this when COVID was around, we were, they were practicing in Heinz Field. When they go home every night, too much distraction. And, uh, you know, when you go to St. Vincent, you have to stay in a dorm with no air conditioning and all that other stuff. So. It's a nice, it's a, it's a nice camp atmosphere out there. I'm told, mm-hmm. but I, I, again, I've never, I, I refuse to sit out in the heat and whatever, and then deal with that. You know, right, right. Well, let's face it, it, it's, it's a good time of year. It's whether oh, you, it's a great like, time of year. You know, whether you like to be outside, any time, any place in the country right now, it's a great time to be outside. It's not well, summer's too cold. winding up, Candy. Uh, you got kids going back, getting ready to go back to school. Uh, you know, I was at a Walmart in Grove City and they were out of everything. I mean, I couldn't even find, I use index cards. I had to order from Staples online. I use index cards for my shows to write all my notes down on. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find any. I mean, wow. you know, highlighter markers. I use those. I had to order those on. I couldn't find any. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the Walmarts were at least a couple that I went to were out of school supplies, you know, I mean, stuff like that. And, uh, but there were a lot of notebooks. 
Yeah. And, and they were only 50 cents and there was a lot of notebooks. <laughs> I remember when Walmart used to sell notebooks for 10 cents. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting because now I know kids down here, teachers go back um, starting next week. Kids are actually in classes yes. starting on August 12th, I believe, if not yes. soon. My friend Bill, the guy whose dog died today, uh, he's my best friend. We're kind of like brothers. He, uh, his kids live in, in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. They live there with their mom, uh, his ex-wife. And uh, the one daughter uh, just graduated. The other one is in 11th grade, I think. And uh, they go back early because they come here for the summer to see him and his other daughter and then uh, from another relationship and mm-hmm. they come here in the summertime and then they go back but mm-hmm. this year they went back earlier than normally they usually stay until like the end of july and then they start school around august they start going mm-hmm. you know yeah but now i can tell you that i was we were just up in wisconsin earlier this week and last uh-huh. week now they don't start school till after labor day because the business industry in the summer has lobbied for years that you take if you started before labor day you're taking too much of their help their summer help away from them right. oh yeah and so for the business yeah. industry they have yeah. they ruled. should do that here in pennsylvania candy they should have you should all go back to school after labor day because i did that for years when i was in in school and mm-hmm. then now all of a sudden they got them coming back the week before and, you know, they get the momentum going or in school for, what, one, maybe two days, you know, that week. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're off for a holiday and then you got to come back, you know. And it's right. just, it's 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 crazy. It, it should be a national thing with that federal law that says you have to go back. You can't go back to school till after Labor Day. And then on top of that, that's why a lot of corporations and politicians and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the president of the Allegheny County Transit Council. So I'm, I. I work hand in hand with uh, the Pittsburgh Regional Transit, our transit system here. Mm -hmm. And when we have our meetings, they have a liaison from the liaisons from the company come to our meetings. Well, in August, they don't come to our meetings. We just do a council only meeting because they're on vacation throughout the whole month of August. In fact, Mm -hmm. you can't even get a hold of none of those executives down there. Our mayor, our city mayor is on vacation for August. The city council's on vacation. The everybody in August just seems to go on vacation because that's the last month where they can really go on vacation. And, you know, and I agree with you handedly. And I, I think it should be after Labor Day so they can get an opportunity to spend them last bit of the summer with mm-hmm. their, their, their kids and family. You know, I agree. Well, Ralph, this has been a really good show. Yes, it I has. Know. It really has. I- it's the first time it was just you and I and not, you know, mm-hmm. all, all of us, you know. Exactly. It was some good conversation. I had a good, I have a good time here on this program. But yeah, me too. Me too. So So tell everybody where they can find you, what shows, when your shows are, and what they're about, so that everybody that wants to can join you. Well, uh, I have RW Media Productions where I'm the president, and uh, I also I have shows on all my shows are on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. I had to take them off. I couldn't go live on on Twitter X because Elon Musk is a greedy pig and he wants to charge me $60 a month and I'm not paying for it. That man has so much money, he could swim in it. So, I mean, you know, and I don't feel I should have to pay. I do post my stuff on Twitter X, but I don't, I'm not live there anymore okay. because he wants me to pay and I'm not going to pay. You know what I mean for that? Yep. So I'm on YouTube. Uh, look up Ralph Williams slash RW Media. And uh, you can see all my shows I have. Uh, Sunday, I do 7 p.m. I do a show called Bible Capsule. We talk about scripture in the Bible. And then at 8 o'clock, and then I have my new show starts on Sunday called Ralph's Opinion Local, where we talk about issues in Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Western Pennsylvania, and the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, and then on Monday, I do The Way We See It with me and Bill Canada. We talk about stuff in the city. We talk a little bit of national stuff, but mostly city and whatnot. And that's at 7 p.m. every Monday night. And then Tuesday, uh, we do Sports Corner with me, Ralph Williams, Smoke, and Jim Frazier. 4 to 6 p.m. 5.30 p.m., we have a, a wrestling segment. And I try to get an independent wrestler on as a guest most every week. And uh, this Tuesday, we're going to talk about the SummerSlam, which is uh, Saturday. 
Uh, we'll be talking mostly about that and some stuff with AEW and whatnot. We talk about mm-hmm. just about everything. But it's only a half an hour, uh, you know, until we can figure out what to do with uh, to move on with something else. We'll wrestle talk. If we get the TV station back up, we're going to be doing some something on there with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, And then on Wednesdays, uh, I have a show I do at 3 p.m. called Ralph's Opinion, and that's the national show where I talk national and world issues. Like I'll be talking this Wednesday about the the Russians releasing prisoners. Uh, mm-hmm. Be talking about that, the election stuff like that. Uh, and then on Thursdays I'm on with you here on Fire Up. I don't have any shows on Thursdays and Fridays. Those are my two days off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just do shows. And, oh, Wednesday also on Wednesday at nine o'clock I'm on with Jeremy Balrick, and uh, we, we do a uh, nine o'clock we do a, a uh, NFL roundtable. And at Wednesday at 1030 on the sports web with Peter Blake, we have a segment called turnbuckle talk. We talk about professional wrestling and then, um, and then Saturday morning, 9 a.m. The external bum show with your husband, Scott Morgan, Roth, Leo Haggerty and Jeremy Balrick. We have a ball on that show. We talk about bums and sports and other sports topics as well. 9 a.m. All my shows are on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. I'm working on getting a uh, Roku channel and I'm working on uh, Spotify. So. And awesome. some other entities as well. So awesome, awesome, awesome. I just had the president of ASAP Sports on with me on Tuesday. We were talking about college football. And uh uh you're, you're gonna start seeing my shows on there as well. So nice, nice. Well, let's and see. And my website's almost done. Oh, um, cool. cool. Yeah, I had to fire the company that I had uh because they weren't doing their job. So I got another company and it's taking a little time, but they're getting it together. It's nice. It's a nice website. I already looked over the draft. So nice. You know. Nice. Well, if you see that red subscribe button down by Ralph underneath Ralph, that means yes. you have to subscribe to our channel. Please do so. Um, typically, and go and get Scott's book. I mean, it's well, a great too. book. Yeah. That too. Um, Scott. Lessons from the microphone. Book. Exactly. Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It's available on Amazon, Kindle, Barnes and Noble, Apple and Google. Um, it talks about media and how media has changed over his 40 plus years in the business. Um, and we have a website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Go check out all kinds of articles. We have transcripts from the Lions, the Dolphins, and... Um, Oh, look, see, Ralph's got the book. He went out and got it. Go buy it today. Yes, yes. Um, We talk on our YouTube channel, Monday nights is baseball, 108 stitches baseball talk. Tuesday nights is inside the pigskin for football. Wednesday nights is sports exchange. Thursday nights is fire up. Uh, We also, Scott is also on nofilter.net where he does the Motor City Mad Mouth Show, which is a one-on-one interview show. Got to check that out as well. All of our um, all of our broadcasts are on YouTube. We also put them, if you are available for the audio version only, if you like listening to podcasts, we put all of them out there as well. So they're available on Google, Apple, iHeartRadio, Spotify, CastBox, Spreaker, all of those places. Um, but go to our website, check it out, buy Scott's book. If you'd like to advertise or sponsor a show, Call Scott, 954-304-4941. You can always email us if you have show ideas at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. We appreciate everybody that's been watching the show. We appreciate Adam. Thank you for commenting on our show. Yes, absolutely, Adam. Thank you for uh, watching tonight. I know we probably didn't get a lot of views yet. Uh, Probably we will once we get off the air because everybody's watching the Hall of Fame game tonight. Everybody's anxious about football. They're ready. You know exactly. I think it's you know everybody's got the itch. You know we have. Oh had it for yeah, I got the itch too for football. You know I love football. I could watch it all year long. I People know. think I'm crazy. I used to talk Mauler talk here when we had the Maulers, and everybody yep. saw oh, you're nuts, man, talking about the Maulers. I said I love football. I mean it was you know exactly, exactly. I have post game shows. I do too, like post game pit and Steeler shows mm-hmm. that I do, and that and that's going to be starting up for football this year. So awesome, awesome. Um, everybody check out the new kickoff rules because there are new kickoff rules this year. Yeah, I'm gonna check this game out when I see the replay on the NFL network. So. Exactly. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you, Ralph. It's been a very You're welcome, fun Candy. It's been a pleasure tonight. 
everybody enjoy and support Ralph and support South Florida Tribune. I will see everybody on Saturday, 9 a.m., the external bump show. Me, exactly. Scott Morgan Roth. I, I, I tell you what, I got some great co-hosts. Jeremy Balrick, Leo Haggerty from Amped Up Sports, and, and your husband, Scott Morgan Roth. I got some great co-hosts. You Plus do. Plus myself, that's, of that's course. It. And yeah. Anybody yeah. wants to wake up, you would go check out that show Saturday morning. Oh, with our really energy, with me and Scott's energy, man. Oh, my. We you, Believe me, if you're tired, you'll wake up. We're better than coffee. <laughs> exactly and you guys bring so much energy which is awesome oh absolutely candy watches the show all the time you know so i do except when i'm working but yeah there you go that's another yeah. whole story well thank you ralph everybody enjoy um and we'll catch you next time on fire up thanks everybody have a good night be safe everybody thanks <laughs>